Okay, so we're going to be talking about uh, unit 6.5 will be ra radical equations. Okay, we'll go over our test review on Wednesday, and we'll take the quiz on Thursday and Friday when we're back to school. So I figured we'd start the next unit now. So we're on unit 6.5, 6 and we're going to be talking about radical equations. Okay, so today is February 4th, no, February 1st. Okay, so a radical equation is an equation that's really rad. <laughs> no, just kidding. A radical equation has a variable under a radical sign, under a radical or has a fractional exponent. Because as we know, we can take fractional exponents and turn them into radicals. Okay, so a radical equation is an equation that has a variable under a radical. Okay, so for example, here's an example. Number one, I might have three times the square root of x plus 4 equals 13, okay? This is considered a radical equation because the variable, the x, is inside the square root, okay? So how do we do this? Well, your goal is to isolate the radical, okay? So goal, isolate radical, okay? Usually it goes to isolate x, but in this case I want to isolate the term that has the radical, Okay, so that's my first step. So let's subtract 4 here from both sides. So I get 3 times the square root of x equals 9. Okay, need to keep getting the radical by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I get the square root of x equals 3. Okay, once the uh, radical is isolated, what you want to do then is square both sides. Okay. Taking the square root and squaring both sides um, are inverse operations. So if I square both sides here, it will cancel out the square root, and we'll get left with x equals 9. Okay. And your third step then is to solve. Of course, there's nothing to solve with this one, but I would get x equals 9 for that. Okay. Whenever you square both sides of an equation, okay, your last step is to check for extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions. Okay. Anytime you solve an equation and you squared both sides, there's a chance sometimes that the equation becomes extraneous. So we need to check that the, extra that the solution is not extraneous. Okay. So if I check over here, I get 3 times the square root of 9 plus 4 equals 13. This, and we're just going to assume we're going to take the, um, the positive square root here because the negative one wouldn't work out, just the principal square root, okay? So that would be 3 times 3 plus 14. Okay, yeah, that's going to check out. So that would be 9 plus 4. So yes, this works, okay? Let's try another one. This one's a little bit different. How about the square root of 5x plus 1 minus 6 equals 0, okay? In this case, I'm going to add the 6 to both sides. So we get the square root of 5x plus 1 equals 6. And now that the radical is by itself, I'm going to square both sides again. So I get 5x plus 1 equals 36. So I end up with x equals 7. Okay, I'm going to check my answer. When x equals 7, I end up with 35 plus 1. Okay, so the square root of 35 plus 1, well, 35 plus 1 is 36. The square root of 36 is 6, and 6 minus 6 is 0. Okay, for the most part, you'll get answers that work out, but sometimes, especially when we t talk about tomorrow, when we have to actually FOIL when we do this, that's where we sometimes get answers that don't work out. Okay, but for the most part, they should work out, but you should still check. Okay, how about this one? Um, 7 plus 
the square root of 2x minus 1 equals 10. Okay, you just subtract the 7 from both sides. So we get the square root of 2x minus 1 equals 3. I want to undo the square root sign by squaring both sides. So I get 2x minus 1 equals 9, which means 2x equals 10. So x is going to equal 5. So let's check when x equals 5. I have 7 plus the square root of 10 minus 1. That's supposed to equal um, 10. Okay, so I get 7 plus 3 equals 10. Yep, that works out. So x equals 5 is the solution. Okay, so if you see a radical, you're going to try to get the radical by itself and then square both sides to undo that. Okay. Like I said, also, what's considered an irrational equation, okay, is if I have um, a, an expression that has a fraction as an exponent, okay? So, for example, if I have 2 times x plus 3 to the 3 halves power equals 54, okay, this is also considered a radical equation. So, to do this, I'm going to isolate the term containing the exponent. Okay, so I'm trying to get the x plus 3, trying to get this by itself, x plus 3 to the 3 halves power by itself, so I'll divide by 2 on both sides. So we get x plus 3 to the 3 halves power equals 27, okay? And now to get rid of this, what I do is I raise each side to the reciprocal power of that exponent, okay? So think about this, 3 over 2, okay? The reciprocal of 3 over 2 is 2 over 3. So if I would raise this side to the 2 thirds power, 3 over 2 times 2 over 3 becomes 1, and my exponent is now gone and I can continue, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to raise each side. It's actually called exponentiate both sides, but raise each side to the reciprocal power. Okay, because anything times it's reciprocal is going to equal one. So over here, I'm going to raise this side to the 2 thirds power. And I'll do the same thing with the 27. Ew, that's where it gets kind of gross, 27 to the 2 thirds. But these end up canceling out, so I get x plus 3 equals, remember this means power over root. So this means it's really the cube root of 27 squared. Okay, so x plus 3 would equal 3 squared. That's a 2. So x plus 3 equals 9, which means that x equals 6. Okay, so I should still check the answer here, okay, so I'm going to plug in, still check it over here, 2 times 6 plus 9 to the 3 halves power is supposed to equal 54, okay, so 2 times 9 to the 3 halves, well, that would be the square root of 9 to the third power, is supposed to equal 54. Oh, yeah, look at that. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the third power is 27. 2 times 27 is 54. So it works out. Okay. Let's try another one of those. Um, 3 times the quantity x plus 1 to the 3 fifths power equals 24. Okay. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. So I get x plus 1 to the 3 fifths power equals 8. And now to get rid of the 3 fifths power, I'm going to raise everything to the 5 thirds. So these cancel out. So I get x plus 1 equals the cube root of 8 to the fifth power. Cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, so this is 2 to the fifth power. 
and 2 to the fifth power is 32. So this becomes x plus 1 equals 32, which means that x equals 31. So let's check when I get 31. So I have 3 times would be 32 to the 3 fifths power, supposed to equal 24. That means 3 times the fifth root of 32 cubed equals 24. Fifth root of 32 is 2 to the third power would be 8. So 3 times 8 is 24. Yep, that one works out also. Okay. Like I said, for the most part, these should work out. It's when we get to ones tomorrow, we're going to be squaring both sides, uh, foiling, where sometimes problems come up. Okay. Here's number 6. It is 4 times x minus 9 to the one-third power equals 8. Okay. Why don't you solve this one by yourself? Okay, I'll freeze it for a minute. So work on this one yourself. did first, I divided everything by 4, so I got x minus 9 to the one-third power equals 2. To get rid of the one-third power, I cube both sides, or I raise both sides to the reciprocal, um, which is 3, so that gives me x minus 9 equals 8, so x equals 17. When you plug 17 in for x, you get 8 over here, the cube root of 8 is 2, 4 times 2 equals 8, so those all work out. Okay, so for your homework, I want you to do worksheet 6.5a, and we'll go over that on Tuesday, and then we'll continue from there, okay? Don't forget to go make, make a snowman. Uh, if you post the photo on the discussion board, uh, I'll give you extra credit points. If it's somehow math-related, I'll give you an extra bonus point, okay? See you on tomorrow.